Welcome to our lecture series on engineering mechanics statics. So for our video for today, we will discuss about the rectangular components of vectors in two-dimensional system and the Cartesian vectors in three-dimensional system. Let's begin with rectangular components of vectors in two-dimensional system. So let us consider here, say, a force F uh, lying on a two-dimensional plane. So let's say this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. So as you can see, the force is lying or directed along the first quadrant. So let's say this angle is called theta. So when we say rectangular components, uh, it is the components of a vector on the axis or on the x and y axis Example, for this force F, the rectangular components of F is Fx and Fy. So take note that the direction of its components will depend on the direction of F. So in this case, F is directed up to the right. So its x and y components is lying on the uh, for x component, it is directed to the right and the y component is directed upward. So, uh, another figure of this one is like this. So, as you can see, uh, if we apply the concept of parallelogram law, remember that the components Fy and Fx must be concurrent at a certain point. And if you draw parallel lines, let's say from this one, this line here is parallel to Fx, and this line is parallel to Fy, therefore the resultant is this one. So we can say that Fy in vector form plus Fx is equals to vector F by uh, parallelogram law of addition. If you want to use the triangle law, so basically, what will happen is you connect the, the components into a head-to-tail manner. Example of this is like this. So you can see Fx and Fy are connected in to a head-to-tail manner. Then the resultant is drawn from this point up to this point. So that is uh, F. So let's say that is the magnitude of the three forces. So this is theta. So the unique thing about this type of, uh, for this topic is that the triangle form from the components and the resultant is a right triangle. So meaning, uh, we don't need to use the sine law and cosine law uh, from our previous topic, which is the triangle law and parallelogram law of addition in vectors. So basically, we will just use the concept of trigonometry. So for this right triangle, obviously, we can say that the cosine of theta is equals to fx over f because fx is the adjacent side of angle theta and fy is the opposite side of angle theta. Then simplifying the equation in terms of fx and fy, we can have a formula for fx and fy which is the magnitude, the magnitude of the components fx and fy. So it is fx equals f cosine theta and fy equals f sine theta. Also remember that the magnitude of the components of the vector uh, represents the side or the length of the side of the, uh, let's say, rectangle formed by the uh, two forces. Then the direction or the sign of the forces will depend on its direction based on the given axis. So for this case, if Fy is directed upward, then the direction of or the sign for the force Fy is positive. And if it is going downward, example, if force vector F is something like this, then its components is, if this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis, Fy is going downward and Fx is going to the left. So for this case, the 
magnitude is basically from the direction we will use the negative sign so that's how to use the coordinate axis to determine the sign will indicate if the direction of the force is directed along the positive x-axis or along the negative x-axis and the same way for the y-axis so sometimes a force is represented by a given slope let's say a slope is uh, for this type of figure the slope is a over b then of course the hypotenuse is c which is square root of a squared plus b squared then we can say that this triangle formed by the slope is somehow proportional to the triangle formed by the forces which is uh, fx fy and fc so we can simply apply the concept of ratio and proportion to solve or to express the components fx and fy in terms of a uh, given slope so for this case we can say that fx over f which is this one uh, fx adjacent side over the hypotenuse is equals to b over c and fy over f which is the opposite side over the hypotenuse is equals to a over c then simplifying the equation we can simply have the components magnitude of the components in terms of this loop which is represented by this one so fx equals f times b over c and fy equals f times a over c so this is uh, very easy to remember because for this case let's say fy you just simply uh, equate this one to the magnitude of the force itself uh, which is f then multiply it by the side parallel to fy which is simply a in this case then divide it to the hypotenuse c so that's how you get the component to make it easier to remember then same goes by if the force is directed to let's say he, the force has a component that is negative because uh, its direction is opposing to the axis so the same principles are applied so there is also a case where you need to solve for the magnitude of f uh, if the force or the components are given so to do that uh, simply you just apply the concept of Pythagorean theorem so basically the square root of the components squared in this you, you add it up then you will get the magnitude of f uh, basically you just use the same triangle which is fy fx are the opposite and adjacent side of theta then f is the hypotenuse then if you want to get the direction theta in terms of the angle with respect to the x-axis uh, you just use this formula theta equals r tan of fy over fx so that's how you solve or you apply concept of trigonometry in vectors another very important thing about vector is to express them into its vector notation so a vector notation is written in this form f vector f is equals to the components fx i which is the x component and fyj which is the y component i and j here is what we will use for the cartesian unit vectors uh, basically we will discuss unit vectors later also in our topic which is the three-dimensional or the cartesian vectors in three-dimensional systems so it is important to express a vector into its vector representation or vector notation because in other operations in vectors such as vector addition and vector multiplication uh, the vector representation is required before you apply those operations so let us have an example 
of our topic, uh, I strongly suggest that you should take a pause after you look at the problem and try to solve it yourself uh, so that you can compare your answers to my answer and check if you can, you really understand the concepts and the principles that I discussed uh, a while ago. So for this problem, example is we have here two forces uh, which has a given magnitude. So F1 has a magnitude of 200 newtons and F2 is 260 newtons and its direction are given for F1 uh, the angle is with respect to the positive y-axis and for F2, uh, the slope is given. So for this prob problem or example problem, the first question is determine the magnitude and direction of the x and y components uh, of F1 and F2. So basically you want to determine the, let's say for F1, we have F1, y which is we know upward and you can answer this question already, direction. Uh, and for x component, f1, x, let's say f1, x, uh, obviously it's going to the left and f2, x and f2, y. So that's the directions of f1 and f2 components of f1 and f2. Then, to determine, letter B, to determine the Cartesian vector representation. So remember, F in vector form is Fxi plus Fyj. So let's do that to both F1 and F2. So let's start first with problem A. So for the solution, so for F1, Obviously, I already wrote the directions of F1 upward and to the left, directions of its components. So F1Y and F1X. So F1Y, we will use cosine 30 of 200 newtons. And F1X, we will use uh, sine 30 because it is opposite. Uh, this this one is like this f1 y if we use the concept of uh, triangle law so this is f1 this is 30 degrees so you use negative sign in f1 x because we know that it is going to the left oppos opposing to the positive x axis so the answer will be 100 newtons to the left uh, which is basically negative, and 173 newtons upward, so it is a positive answer. So it will look like this. So this is 173, and this is 100 newtons. For F2, uh, it is going downward and going to the right. So basically for F2x and F2y, for F2x, it is 260 times 12 over 13, and which is, which is this one. Then for F2y is 5 divided by 13 times 260, which is this one. Then you write a negative sign because it is going downward. Then you will have an answer of 240 newtons to the right for x component and 100 newtons downward for the y component. So it will look like uh, this. So this is 240 newtons. So that's the answers for problem letter A. For problem letter B, determine the Cartesian vector representation of F1 and F2. So since we already calculated the components, so it is easier now because we just apply it to the formula or the vector notation. Remember the vector notation is fx i plus fy j. So we already have fx and fy from the solutions in uh, part A. 
So, just apply it here. So, 240 for the x component, positive, and negative 100 for the j or y component. Then, for f1, we have negative uh, 100 here for the x component and positive 173 y or j for the y component. 